Joining me now is David Goldman, a.k.a. Spengler. He writes for the for Pajamas Media, PJ Media, and the Asia Times, and he's particularly brilliant. And we're going to talk now in particular, and maybe only, about his piece today called A Coup Attempt, Not a Constitutional Crisis. I think you know what I'm talking about. And David, thank you for joining me today. Adam, it's always a pleasure. Thanks for the invitation. Yeah. So you're saying it's not a constitutional crisis. It's an actual coup attempt. Can you explain for people who may not have read it yet what you mean by that? Well, the word impeachment has been bandied about by people who want to know a great deal better, like Senator John McCain and various other uh, Republican dignitaries, uh, not to mention, of course, by uh, the left-wing press. Uh, this is all complete nonsense. There might be a constitutional crisis if President Trump were remotely chargeable with impeachable offenses. Uh, that's complete. That's just completely false. And every legal analyst who's looked at the situation has made clear that nothing has been alleged against him, much less proven, which remotely would constitute an impeachable offense. The Comey memo, uh, uh, in particular, which uh, everybody's heard about. We can dwell on that in a second. There is, however. An effort developing uh, a, a foul um, combination by the uh, mainstream media, the Democrats, and a certain group of Republicans, including McCain, including the Wall Street Journal editorial page, mm -hmm. to try to declare him unfit for office and drive him from office. That's what I mean by a coup attempt, and I'm using the term because I heard it used by a highly respected Republican statesman. Uh, who put it in, exa in, in exactly those terms? Who was uh, it? Of course, this is I, that I can't say because okay. it was an off the record briefing. Off the record. Uh, uh, nonetheless, uh, we're likely to have a very bitter war of attrition. Another term comes to mind used by my friend uh, Professor Angelo Codavilla, and that's a cold civil war. Oh, I civil think that's been going on for a while. Guns. That's been going on for quite a while. It is, At but least by now. One side. But, Yes, but the legitimacy of the Trump presidency is now being challenged by a number of Republicans, and the scheme is to try to corral a sufficient number of Republican senator congressmen into the Trump must go camp, uh, and make it impossible for, the, for him to govern, and force him out. Uh, I think uh, Trump can win this. Mm -hmm. I don't know if he will. Uh, it's got to be fought. I think the way he fought the campaign. It's only, you know, week 17 into his term, so right. you have to give the man a certain amount of, uh, you know, credit for possible, just having started. Is it possible yes. this overreach that is going on will cause Republicans not even, including plenty who are not even that pro-Trump and have some serious concerns about the way he's run his presidency so far, to circle the wagons? Obviously, the Wall Street Journal is very respectable. But there is so much McCain fa fatigue out there that when he is out there and Bill Kristol is out there so prominent and giddy about this, it causes people to back off a little bit, I think, at least. Well, I, I think that this has made a lot of Republicans extremely vulnerable to primary challenges, mm -hmm. as indeed they were from the Tea Party uh, several years ago. Uh, the problem is that Trump doesn't really have a political party. He ran as an individual, as an entrepreneur, as an outsider. Uh, it would be very valuable for him to have a political movement behind him that could field candidates uh, that could either displace from office the likes of Senator McCain mm -hmm. or at least make life extremely difficult for them, put pressure on them uh, at the grassroots. And the risk here is that the president will be so distracted from all of the insults and provocations hurled at him that he'll lose sight of the political agenda that got him elected in the first place. So my advice to Trump is stay with, remember who you came into the party with. Stay with the basic issues. Keep repeating them. The campaign isn't over until everything's passed into legislation. Do you think part of the problem is the people advising Trump? Is he confused because he has so many people pulling at him from different directions, including the Ivanka and Jared factor? I 
I don't know what Ivanka and Jared are advising him. I'm not in the White House, mm -hmm. uh, so I don't want to guess about it. However, I think it's pretty obvious that he's getting a lot of different inputs from a lot of different people, and that some of those people have been leaking to the press how little they like some of the other people. So clearly, uh, there there's some wood to chop in terms of getting the White House into order and getting everybody singing from the same hymn book. Now, David, uh, it's not just you and I talking privately. Obviously, people are listening. Uh, I want to go over something you said, and just so people have the talking points on their tongue about how there is absolutely no basis for impeachment. And impeachment, of course, is high crimes and misdemeanors, which is kind of a vague term. And still there's no case. And you mentioned in your article about Jonathan Turley, just want I want to reinforce with people how groundless this all is and you know if you give me a little more ammo there it would be appreciated oh well, it's fake news it's mm -hmm. not just fake news uh it's it's uh as uh one senior white house staffer told a private lunch that i attended yesterday it's just pure propaganda uh the allegation in the comey memo supposedly is that trump told comey that it would be nice if somehow they could go easy on his friend, Jeremy Flynn. I forget the exact wording. He didn't tell uh, Comey, you're ordered not to conduct an investigation. You're ordered not to charge him with anything. He said, uh, I th you know, it wouldn't be good if a guy got a break, essentially. Mm -hmm. Now, Professor Turley is a professor of constitutional law and expert on impeachment proceedings at George Washington University. Right. And he says plainly, Unless there is a grand jury and panel, unless there is an issue of justice before the bar, there can't be obstruction of justice. There's no criminal investigation because no criminal charges have been proffered. Now, it might be an impropriety to intervene on behalf of a friend and colleague, and that might be cause for, you know, a knuckle wrap. But it doesn't come close to meeting the standard, even if true, even if true, it doesn't come close to meeting the standard for impeachments. The whole impeachment story is complete garbage. There's nothing to it except the echo chamber of the media and uh, the Republicans in name only. It's amazing to me uh, how how much attention this is getting with people just repeating the same Five second sound bites about it when they don't even know anything, and yet Seth Rich, whom you mention in the same column, is ignored. And you think well, it may yeah, not be unrelated. Well, here, supposedly, the Russians influence the elections by leaking to WikiLeaks a whole bunch of Democratic National Committee emails, which show that the Democratic National Committee was rigging the primaries to screw Bernie Sanders. It turns out that there is some evidence, I don't know how sound it is, uh, Fox News had some good reporting on this, that a young Democratic Party staffer, obviously sympathetic to Sanders, named Seth Rich, uh, was in touch with WikiLeaks. Mm -hmm. There's evidence that he sent a lot of emails. So it very well may be Sanders people who leaked this, and we have the additional complication that in July 2016, in the middle of the campaign, Seth Rich was gunned down on the street a few blocks from his house in a crime that was never solved. Yeah, and the investigation was dropped. It wasn't merely that it was never solved. They showed very little interest in pursuing it that heavily from everything yes, I understand. Yes, I, I, would like, I would like to know a great deal more about that. But the problem is, since we're not in the FBI or the Washington police force, we don't have access to the information, it's impossible to, uh, you know, to evaluate the information. But the one thing we can say with absolute certainty that every competent legal expert has said is that the impeachment word is a bunch of complete hooey. Yeah, and one more thing related to this column. If we have time, I want to get to your second most recent column at PJ Media. But the McCain factor, is he really that bitter and deranged and just vindictive or whatever, or just doesn't realize that his time has passed or that he's ridden uh, the coattails of his father, essentially, and grandfather to the greatest extent possible. What's going on in his head? Is he just that vicious? I don't know what's going on in his head, but I can say as a matter of public record that John McCain 
along with Bill Kristol and the neoconservative wing of the Republican Party, supported the most destructive and stupid thing we've ever done in foreign policy, maybe any kind of policy, putting $4 trillion and tens of thousands of lives, wounded and 5,000 killed, into an adventure in Iraq and Afghanistan, which gained us absolutely nothing, left us worse off than where we began. And Donald Trump won the primaries, at least in part, because he stood up and told the truth about it. He said it was the dumbest thing we ever did. McCain's reputation and Bill Crystal's reputation ride on these things, and so, by the way, do the reputations of many senior people in the intelligence community. Right. That's why there's a feud between Trump and the intelligence community. It's not that Trump was impolite to somebody. It's they've got a policy difference, and reputations and careers are on the line. A lot of money. What I think, I think the, I mean, what I would, Trump hasn't asked for my advice, but if he did, I would tell him, forget about the personalities. Keep reminding people why they voted for him, what mm -hmm. the policy issues are that McCain and these other boneheads are catastrophic failures. They nearly ruined this country. And Trump has taken the country in a different, better direction. And that's what the fight is really about. And I think it's interesting that when you talk about the neocon agenda that Trump went against, the three people who were just mentioned are McCain, Crystal, and uh, Bush, none of whom would have gotten to the positions they were in had it not been for who their fathers are. Uh, I don't think anyone can disagree with that. Uh, whether they prove themselves later on or not, they are where they Adam, are. Adam, uh, you may be right, but I, I, I really don't want to make this personal. Mm -hmm. I want to go back to the policy issues on which Trump won the election. I don't want to make it personal. I want to make clear that the all the attacks on Trump are coming from people who are catastrophic failures and who are wrong and against whom people elected Donald Trump. All this nonsense is a smokescreen to cover up the fact that the American people chose a certain kind of policy and repudiated the policies of the King and these other bozos. Uh, and they're trying to undo the result by playing dirty. Gotcha. We're out of time. I would have liked to get to the existential roots of Trump derangement sy syndrome, but uh, I guess we'll talk to you again soon, hopefully. Uh, and it's always a real privilege to have you on and share your views with the audience.